Have you heard the phrase, sitting is the new smoking? In this episode, I want to let you know about a new product I've put together called Crushing Office Syndrome that deals with the effects of the sedentary lifestyle. It's an online Qigong training product, and I created it for the many professional people I know who spend six to eight hours a day at a desk and suffer from backache, neck ache, and stress generally. This product has over 15 Qigong exercises, multiple follow along routines, and supporting PDFs to help you along. And it leaves you feeling more flexible, more mobile, and mentally fresh. You can find a link to the product in the podcast description or visit warriorstrategy.com slash products. Again, you can find a link to the product in the podcast description or just visit warriorstrategy.com slash products. Thanks. Hello there, this is Robin Gamble. Welcome to the Scholar Warrior podcast. Now the idea of the Scholar Warrior has been around for thousands of years across many great cultures. And the concept is this, that one of the highest achievements in society is to become skilled in the martial arts while also pursuing the scholarly pursuits of painting, poetry, music, philosophy, and more. So it's here that I interview martial artists as well as artists in various fields so that you, the listener, can gain a peek into their techniques, skills, and strategies for success. And so that you, the listener, may gather these gems and apply them on your own path to self-mastery and excellence. Enjoy. Hello, today my guest is Kensuke Shimizu. Ken is based in Tokyo, where he runs a busy healing practice, deploying skills in acupuncture, Japanese seitai, and even osteopathy. Now, Ken is also an enthusiastic martial artist and meditation practitioner with many years of experience. And in this episode, you'll hear about his experience in various martial arts, why he became a lifelong practitioner of meditation, and how he feels that hurting and healing are part of the same whole. And I feel there's some very big takeaways in this episode. For example, why Ken started to really get into seated meditation. And uh, here's a clue, it involved a girlfriend. Uh, How he uses meditation as a daily review to pursue happiness. And also, how he likes to maintain, as best he can, his mindful awareness in every activity he does. So be it martial arts or even opening a door. Now, one caveat before we jump into this. Ken's mother tongue is Japanese. He speaks slow, calm, and collected. So please be patient, because there's some really good, actionable nuggets in here for you. So with that in mind, please do enjoy this interview with Kensuke Shimizu. Okay, so this morning I am with Ken. Um, you've already heard his bio. He practices internal martial arts. He also practices healing. And uh, we've exchanged knowledge and skills over the past couple of weeks, and I've been really impressed with many of uh, the qualities that that. Ken displays in his teaching and in his, in his healing. So how about the martial arts? How did that begin? How did that, that begin? How did the martial arts Because begin? I wanted to beat everybody up. Because <laughs> I was so frustrated. And I was isolated. And so I hated everybody. Wow. So that's why I won. I started. So how old were you? 15. 15. 14, 15, something. So you feel very frustrated. Uh-huh. You want to go and beat some people up. Yeah, punch everybody. <laughs> punch everybody. <laughs> Basically. So where did you find the, the outlet for that? What do you mean? Um, was it judo? You, you went into a judo class with kickboxing? Or? More like karate and aikido. Okay. So uh, what type of karate did you do? Not sure, just punching, kicking. Just punching, kicking. <laughs> punching, kicking. No, correct. no arts. It's not arts. Okay. Just punching and kicking. <laughs> but Did as as I go on, as I went on, I was more interested in the arts itself. 
rather than beating up somebody. So the, the process of personal development through the art, through the martial art? Mm, yes. Um, you now, you've been on quite a journey through the martial arts and today you're training Taiji Chuen and Shin Yi. Yes. Why? 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 Because, like I said, I was beat, I wanted to beat everybody up when I started. Then I was more interested in the martial arts itself, like the arts. arts. Mm. When I started Aiki Jiu Jitsu, which is the origin of Aikido, and those techniques used in Aiki Jiu Jitsu was quite fascinating and no what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why Tai Chi Chuan? Why Xin Yi? Okay. <laughs> so that Aiki Jiu Jitsu got me interested in martial arts. And I kept on learning, so I went on traveling, right? And I quit this Aikiju just because I had to leave Japan. Mm -hmm. And after that, I learned Capoeira, Brazilian martial arts. Nice. And then Russian martial arts called Sistema. Yeah. And in Sistema, there are training where you get punched, where you have to be punched. Mm -hmm. Well, I kicked yeah. so many times, and I was so how do I say how so damaged, uh, yes. and I had pain everywhere. So I quit. Maybe for t I quit for two or three years, two, maybe two years, before starting Tai Chi and Xin Yi. So, learning from this experience, I wanted to do something soft. Okay, so going from hard to soft. Yeah. And maybe looking to heal some of the yes. things. Yes. Yeah. And so you found that Tai, tai Chi Chuan helped this process? Yes, I think so. I got more healthy, healthier. Okay. So that means that you, uh, some pain started to go or you feel yourself having more energy or... Pain started to go. Maybe not. Maybe it's not only because of Tai Chi, but it went away, mm. and I got healthier more, which means I got. I'm more energized. Right. I right. feel more energized. Do you have a preference? Do you prefer Tai Chi or Xin Yi, or you like both of them equally? Actually, I think I like Xin Yi more. Because it's more direct, feels, ah. fit, it fits me. Fits you somehow. Maybe the Zen, <laughs> <laughs> the Zen gets manifest, manifested in Xin Yi. And for people that, uh, for listeners that may not be familiar with Tai Chi Chuan or Xin Yi Chuan, Tai Chi Chuan is typically more flowing, more circular. Xin Yi Chuan is, tends to be more direct and just pushing straight, straight ahead. So those can, different people can find themselves enjoying them for, for maybe the characteristics that mm -hmm. they have, yeah? Um, so let's have a look at meditation because anybody that spends time around Ken normally says, Ken, you are very chilled, you are very relaxed and um, when they investigate a little bit more you normally say, well, this is, a, this is connected with meditation from your experience. So, how long would you say you've actually, I know you, you began to look into it around the age of 15, but when do you think you began to really develop a, a sitting practice, a regular sitting meditation practice? I learned this meditation called Vipassana at the age of 22 or 3, and I really got into it when I got 30. And mm. after 30 years old, 
I sit every day, every morning before sun sunrise. Okay. So I would say 10 years or 15 years, depending on where is where you. S so, what made you take the step into doing it sort of ha habitually every morning? What was the thing that made you think, well, now I should start doing this every morning? You're asking me about what happened yeah. when I was 30, right? Sure. I was, after graduating from university, I was teaching English for three years. And after that, I was traveling for three years. And at the end of that, this three years trip around the world, I was living in New York and I was living with a girlfriend, with my girlfriend. And I knew her for a long, long time since we are like teenagers and I really loved her and she I knew that she really loved me but we didn't get along and we were fighting all the time so maybe I was the one who was fighting <laughs> anyway we broke up and at that time I thought I have to change and that's why I started meditation because this relationship problem had been happening for many times, even before that. Okay. So I thought I might have to change wow. because it's me, not them. Wow. That's a big uh, uh, awakening huh? to, mm -hmm. to say, uh, well, the responsibility is on me and I've got a method which I, I think can work. And so you did that, you, you've done that for 10 years, and mm -hmm. obviously it's difficult to know, you know, put your finger sometimes directly on what has changed, mm -hmm. but what do you think has changed in those 10 years in terms of yourself? In terms of myself? I don't know how I look from, I cannot tell how I look from outside, but I can tell what's, what happened inside, and... Before, maybe 10 years back, 10 years ago, I was maybe 50% or 60% of the time I was frustrated and 5% of the time I was rather happy. But right now, 10 years later, I feel happy, maybe 97 or 98% of the time. Peaceful, calm. Wow. Uh, if I mean, if you needed an advert for 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 why to do, why to start seated meditation, that's a pretty good uh, incentive. Of course, maybe not everybody is going to achieve such result, and you have uh, built the practice mm -hmm. over over years. And determination. Yeah, and determination, and uh, lots of things have, have obviously helped you. I mean martial arts is true you're also coming in and, and helping and I would imagine you feel the martial arts help the meditation and the meditation help the martial arts true Do you feel that because you know when I was training in Sistema maybe about 10 years ago or a little bit before that I realized that mindset is very important in martial arts too, maybe even before that. Because people become, how do I say? People become different in training room or like on the ring. They get excited or, and then when they go back home, they get relaxed. I thought this is not the way. I thought it has to be always, how do I say, not to tense, but not to calm. Always keep the same tension anywhere you are, like when you are walking, when you are at home, when you are sitting, having coffee, or wherever you are, or where, whatever you do, you have to be in the same state. That's what I felt when I was learning martial arts. So okay. the meditation helped that too. 
That's very interesting. So you're always keeping this kind of equilibrium. So when you're training martial arts, you're not coming into a heightened adrenaline no. type of mindset. You're staying exactly how you are when you're eating a meal, yeah. which is aware, calm, mm -hmm. confident. Um, yes, aware. Right. Man, I try to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except, I think I am doing it more or less <laughs> when I meet cute girls. <laughs> <laughs> then the balance goes. Then the balance goes. <laughs> totally goes. Uh, for anybody listening, I can tell you that um, I have eaten many meals with Ken, and we we been out to restaurants and we've also trained martial arts and the proof is in the pudding you I mean he's telling me this now we haven't talked about this before but I can say in retrospect looking back that he walks the walk in terms of what he's saying when we've trained martial arts he was very calm very happy very enjoyable so I think that's a pretty big takeaway there um, so I've heard you lecture on the topic of Zen. Yes. Uh, and it was very nice. And part of what you did was um, you, you referenced these very old pictures from China which showed the journey of Zen meditation. Um, I'm obviously, I'm not going to ask you to repeat a lecture mm -hmm. now. But do you think you could give an outline of what those pictures represent uh, for maybe someone who's listening who's got no clue about Zen? Okay. Uh, because Zen is one of these terms which is used in, uh, in the West far too flippantly. We say, yes. oh, he's very Zen. Yeah, yeah. No one even knows really what that means. Mm -hmm. you know? Or they say, uh, this, is, um, yeah, this is Zen, that's Zen. But, so could you perhaps give an overview of those pictures and the journey of Zen, would that be possible? Sure. So, I'm not a Zen monk, so I'm not sure it's, it's really correct, but when you talk about meditation or when people talk about meditation, they tend to think meditation as being blank, be thinking of nothing, but I know it's impossible. It's really impossible for anybody to think nothing suddenly. So this picture shows how you go up the ladder as you keep on meditating. In the, at first, you are lost and you are looking for a way. And you find a footstep and hear teachings, read books, and then finally you find meditation. And in meditation, the most important thing to be aware is not identify yourself with your thoughts or your emotions. Like people's minds go everywhere. They go to the past, to the future, to anger, sadness, happiness, joy, they go everywhere. And they, the mind, drags you to everywhere. And you are helplessly dragged to sadness, to anger, to future, to the past. And you just follow. But in meditation, you are not the mind. It's the first thing you need to know. And you have to be here. And you have to be the master of your mind. Rather than letting the mind be the master. And let him, let the mind drag you down everywhere he wants. So it's all about being you and I wouldn't say con I, I don't want to use this term control right. it's more like tame and know your mind well and as you know the mind well 
as you know the mind better, the mind will calmer and eventually it follows you. Right. And I think that's all. Yeah, and through the through the picture series that you showed, um, we had the uh, the guy was lost. He sees the footsteps. Yep. He gets some knowledge about meditation, and then uh, he found, is it an ox? Yes, bull. A bull. And what does the bull represent? In my opinion, it represents the mind. So, people can get to the idea of uh, the mind is like an uncontrollable bull charging yes. around. Yes. By the way, this is called ten bulls picture. Ten bulls. Ten bull pic. Ten bull picture. Yes. Okay. Or ten so, ox picture. Or ten ox. So if someone wanted to see this picture series, they go to the Google, and they put in ten zen, maybe ten ox or something, or ten, ten bulls pictures. Picture. Ten bull pictures or ten bulls pictures. I'm not sure. And they're going to see these 10 pictures come up with three circles and a picture in each circle showing the journey. Yes. So the bull is leading you all around the place mm -hmm. and then you begin to tame the bull. Yes. And then there's a beautiful picture of the guy riding the bull. Uh -huh. Playing flute. Playing the flute on the bull. So uh, what, is, what, uh, what in your opinion is that? This state? Yes. The stage shows that now you are happy and the bull goes wherever you want mm. without telling him where you want to go. Yeah. He just follows. And you can be happy. You can be happy. And I think lots of people would really enjoy that idea, the idea that they do not have to be their crazy roller coaster of thoughts and emotions. Mm -hmm. There is another way, and many people have done it through meditation, and there is a very nice feeling of calmness and satisfaction if you follow the steps. Mm -hmm. Then one of the pictures is empty. Yep. We presume the gentleman has reached enlightenment, mm -hmm. returned to the void. Uh, but after he reaches enlightenment, uh, he doesn't check into a five-star hotel. <laughs> what does he do after he reaches enlightenment? He eats. He, he eats. Sleep, uh -huh. He do everyday thing, like going to shopping mall, prepare so, food. So once you clothes. reach enlightenment, you don't disappear into space. You still carry on your daily life. Uh, and then he comes down the mountain and then he, he finds someone to teach. Yes. I think that's also an important lesson because I think a lot of people think spirituality is running away up a mountain mm -hmm. and never coming down. It's silly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because in, like, in Japanese saying... Or Maybe it's Chinese saying, when you walk this, this spiritual path, as you said, as you say, people tend to go far away into the mountains, away from homes, away from cities, and hide in retreats, or like ashram, or like Himalaya, wherever they go. And there, they can be peaceful, of course. Why not? It's easy. It's quiet. There's nothing to be stressed about. But this is not the real way. You have to go into the society and see what you got, really got. And if you can be in the same state in the cities, then you are the master. Then you've achieved something. Yeah. And it's, you can serve people. Yeah, yeah. It's much easier to be like hermit yeah. in mountain. And be spiritual yes. when you don't have to face anything. Mm -hmm. It is a waste if yeah. you have really have learned something. You should be sharing it. Um, 
I was going to ask if you could exam give us an example of how to apply, or how at least how you apply Zen in your daily life. I mean, we already know that your emotions have become more calm, more stable, but is there any way that that you apply Zen in your daily life that might be interesting for people to know about? Like I said, I meditate every morning before sunrise, about 30 minutes or one hour. And in this meditation, in a way meditation is like a mirror. You know, every, everybody watches mirror in the morning. And if your face has some mud, you wash it, wash it off. But what about your mind? You have to see the mind through a mirror. For me, meditation is something like this. See myself in the mirror. See my mind or like my state. And if it's, if I feel there are times that I tend to be irritated. And, but I don't realize it. But if I meditate, at least I know I can realize that I'm in irritation and I can be prepared to maybe avoid to talk this person today or avoid this decision today right. when I'm not in peace. Because when I'm not in peace, you tend to make wrong decisions. Right, okay. So yes. you're, you're, you're getting this... Uh like almost like an internal review of how the mm -hmm. mind is doing, mm -hmm. what is rising up, uh -huh. what needs to be addressed. And the other thing, other usage of this meditation is if I'm feeling all right today, I look back yesterday and think about the things I did. And if I'm not in a good state, state today, then I look back you think about the things I did yesterday that in this way I learn what's good for me like mm -hmm. how do I say in this way I have learned how I should eat or how food I should need or food I should avoid or which place I should go or which place I should avoid so you're you're able to review the actions and the and the habits and everything that happened in the day before the day before and see what worked what was useful what was uh, uh, what was nutritious what was uh, yes. stimulating what worked well by watching your mind and body right and I mean sometimes that can be that can take people years decades or a lifetime to realize they've been doing something that was damaging, harmful mm -hmm. to themselves. Mm -hmm. And you get to do this on a daily basis, yes. pretty much. Yes, and uh, I'm still improving. Yes, yeah. of course. So needless to say, that could have some fairly big implications. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to keep working towards what, what works and what's healthy, presumably. So Because I want to feel happy and good. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. So I avoid things or people yeah. or like places which makes me bad. Right. Or uncomfortable. Right. Okay. In terms of healing, mm -hmm. could you let us know um, yeah, a little bit about the background? Because I know you've studied quite a few different mm -hmm. uh, methods of healing. Could you let us know how? about that. Okay. Where did I start? I don't know, at the beginning? <laughs> the beginning is probably martial arts. Okay. Because a lot, I saw many martial arts masters who are doing also the healing. Uh -huh. And at one stage of my life, I thought that 
if I learn how to heal people, maybe I will learn how to be more efficient in martial arts because it's not two different things. It looks different. Martial arts is is a technique to hurt somebody or kill somebody. And healing is art to heal. But if you think about it this way, it's not that two, two different thing. If it is this. The healing arts or martial arts, if you know the body well, you can use it to heal or to break. Right. So it's two sides of the same coin for me. Yeah. Of knowing the human body and mind. And if you know it really well, you can use it both ways to heal or to break. Right. Okay. Um, and many great martial arts, again, uh, concepts from the East, uh, many martial artists, traditional martial artists, know how to heal. Mm. Uh, and, and, and as you've just explained, that makes them better at hurting and better at healing. <laughs> yes. So, uh, because in the, these, these days, we don't use this martial arts, really, unless you are soldiers. Or body even guard. if you are soldiers, you should. And yeah. you don't use this martial arts, so what's the point in learning? Mm -hmm. Really, mm -hmm. yeah. it's much more useful if you use it in healing. Right, and you find that the martial arts has enhanced your healing. Yes, I think so. Enhanced. Yes, I knew how to touch people thanks to this Aiki Jiu Jitsu experience, mm. without making them feel uncomfortable or something. Okay. Can you tell us some of the results that you've experienced with with this method? What okay, so for example, what kind of problems do people come with to you with? Uh, I for for the listeners uh, to know, Ken um, lives and works in Tokyo and has a very busy work life there, helping people in, in Tokyo with healing. So what are people coming to you with, typically? Maybe 30% or 40% of people come with back pain, and 30% shoulder and neck problem, like tension or pain. And other than that, pains, numbness, and digestive problems, sleep disorder, menstruation problem, many other problems. So these feel very much like uh, modern day work related, stress related problems, typically. Okay, moving on to martial arts and Qigong. Okay. Um, what, what does your martial arts practice kind of look like in a day? What, what do you find yourself doing? In a day? Yeah, yeah. If you, you decide, I'm going to do some martial arts today. Hmm, it's a tough question. Yeah. What do I do? Mm. Other than trainings. Yeah, but what type of training do you do? Okay. First of all, I do training, of course, right? Okay. Like standing zen, chan song is one thing. Okay, so for someone listening, that means standing meditation and holding postures. Yes. Standing and holding postures. Uh -huh. And I do all these forms. How do you call forms? Yeah, forms or sets. Uh -huh. So that would be a, like a Tai Chi yes, set. Or a Shin Yi set. But other than that, I tend, I rather think you can train in everyday life. Do some training. So for people listening and don't know what on earth Ken's talking about. <laughs> When he was saying opening the door, he he seemed to he engaged his abdomen and then made a, a forceful movement with his with his hands. So, and to give you a little bit more kind of background, 
Ken is training internal martial arts like Tai Chi Chuan, Xin Yi Chuan. Um, these could focus on moving the whole body as one unit, for example, or starting the movement from the abdomen and then moving it out through the hands. And so these kind of things you can put into almost any daily. Yes, like things. when I open this door, I do like this. Yeah, he does a Tai Chi movement to open the door. Or, as he was telling me the other day, he would engage his abdomen, or the, or the area called the dantian, to pick something up. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an interesting concept. If, you've, if you're only used to doing martial arts in the dojo, you know, or the kun, or uh, bringing your, your training into every moment. When, even when you walk. Right. Um, that way it's easier to train. Yeah. Actually, it's hard to set certain amount of time of training in your daily life so I just put it in my daily life <laughs> <laughs> which is more cost effective uh -huh. yeah. okay so we're gonna we're moving towards the end and I've got a few more questions that I'd like to ask you first just for listeners uh, and then some bonus questions which are meant to be a little bit quicker but oftentimes they end up being a little bit slower or you want to skip them so but so, in terms of benefit for the listeners, how do you think uh, listeners could, how should they start something like meditation? I mean, obviously we don't suggest someone starting meditation, wake up at four o'clock in the morning, try and do no. an hour. Right? No. They're just going to lose. So how would, how would you suggest someone start? How would I suggest someone start Sorry. meditation? First of all, I would ask if they really want to do meditation or why they want to do meditation because meditation is only one way and there are many, lots of ways so I want to confirm if it's really the thing they want and if it's the thing that they want I would say I would in, encourage them to do meditation five minutes for five minutes every day rather than doing one hour once a week. So set yourself up to declare your intention first, really why do you want to do it? Yeah. And then make it easy to do. Mm -hmm. Not a big monstrous thing which no. is kind of hanging over you. And then they could start to build the habit. Mm -hmm. um, how could martial arts inf uh, positively affect someone's sort of professional life, do you think? I find many important principles, principles, in martial arts which can be used in daily life when I was learning Aiki Jiu Jitsu or like Tai Chi or Shin Yi I think in Western martial arts like boxing or like UFJ or UFC, yeah. UFC these are like just power and speed and muscle and they are fight they are just banging power with power and nothing in there to learn in daily life. But like in Tai Chi or in Aiki Jiu Jitsu, like in Oriental Martial Arts, there are some of the things that you can be used in daily life. And in those martial arts, you can feel it. Rather than knowing, you can feel the principles like in Aikido when you try to how do I say take somebody down to the floor you don't do it with the power because if you do it with the power the other person will resist but if you do it in a way that the other person don't want to even don't want to resist, then you get him onto the floor without 
any power and without any frustration to both of us, mm -hmm. and which can be true in life. For example, like if you make somebody do it, sometimes you get it, but sometimes you don't get it, and even if you get it, one of us, mm -hmm. one of the people get frustrated because mm -hmm. he's doing what he doesn't want to do or I'm not getting the result. But if I do it in a way that make him want to do it, then I get happy and he get happy. So that's how, that's one example how you can apply the principle of martial arts into real life. So these principles can be very useful, very applicable. I think so. I'm going to ask you some bonus questions. Okay. What are you not very good at? What I'm not really good at? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm quite good at many things. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you're not very good at? Maybe making radiation with skulls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have to we have to apply some uh, strategy. True. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me something that's true that no almost nobody agrees with you on. Something that you f feel is true and almost nobody agrees with you. I don't think there are such things because if you get the real truth, everybody can agree. <laughs> so <laughs> if if not so many, if other people are not, not why do I say? If other people don't agree with you or don't agree with the principle you have learned, then it's not the right principle. That's the way I tend to think. Okay. Am I answering it right? It's your answer. Okay. There's no. I mean, your answer is the correct answer. Your biggest or weirdest fear? I have no fear. Wow, that's a bold statement. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, Raza. When I have fear, I know that I want to do it. Do it. Ah. So I go on doing it, rather than let myself feel the fear. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, when I f people usually feel fear, because they want to do this, but they are afraid to do it, usually. Mm -hmm. So I just do it. So there's no time to feel the fear, because I do it quickly. Right. Zen. Just do it. Just do it. If you can have dinner, drink tea, have a beer, whatever you like, mm -hmm. with three people, mm -hmm. either living or dead, who would you choose? First of all, Buddha. Buddha. Yeah, that's the man I love to see. Yeah. And the other one is called Kukai. He's also a very famous Japanese monk who was in Japan uh, maybe 1,000 years ago. And he was nobody in Japan, but he went to China and he was approved by some highest, some of the highest monk in China. Wow. In two years. Wow. And he, how do I say, he inherited the rank, mm. this highest rank and brought it to Japan, and he's one of the biggest, highest monk. Wow. So, so he's a genius. And Kukai. Yeah. And when you've got space for one more person. One more person, let me think. I would love to see this guy called Miyamoto Musashi. Yes. He was a fighter, sword fighter, and very famous one. And he's maybe one of the most famous sword fighter, samurai, and he killed so many people, he must have been so violent in the, at first, 
but in the end he has changed and he so he wrote books on it which is still read in Japan all over the over all over the world. The Book of Five Rings. Yes. So he is one of the examples who had really learned something from martial arts which can be applied into real life. So those are the three people I would love to see. And reportedly undefeated, never mm -hmm. beaten. Never beaten. In life and death fighting. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. So one time they, there was a fight with 60 people or something like that and he won. What must these people have been like in the past? We've got no idea. No. They were on another level. And last question. Any uh, actually, I was going to ask any good book, documentary, or movie that you would recommend people listen to, but I, I would imagine one of them would be Book of Five Rings. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would recommend people look at if they would like to know more about Zen or anything that you've been talking about? Martial arts, meditation, or anything. Mission? Just anything, any movie that, or documentary or book that you think is worth reading. Some of them are in Japanese. So, so they will have to learn Japanese first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's in English, some of the books from Osho okay. I like. I used to like. Mm. I still like it. Mm. And other than that, what else? Like seven, seven habits oh, yeah. of highly... Uh, highly effective people. Yeah, that's one of that's, the books. Um, Covey, Stephen Co ah, yeah. Covey. Covey, yeah. And I like Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie, yeah. How to... How to uh, win friends, friends and influence yeah. people or something? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because when I read these books, I found some similarities between the teaching of Buddhism mm. and these things. So there's got to be truth in these books. Right. So, so one example could be in the Seven Habits, sharpening the saw. Right? Mm -hmm. Continually improving yourself. Continually improving yourself. Yeah. Um, Ken, if people want to work with you, they, want, they find themselves in Japan, uh, in Tokyo, they would like to meet you or they experience your service. How should they do that? How would they get in contact with you? Search me. Search you. Google. 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 Okay. Anybody listening, I obviously you're going to have Ken's full name, and uh, I will find some links, uh, and I'll put the links underneath the, dis the description of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but it's in Japanese. Uh, so, again, you're going to have to learn Japanese. <laughs> 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 yeah, if... Ken, if you, uh, if you find yourself in Japan, Ken is worth checking out. So it's worth finding a Japanese friend and helping you yeah, get yourself to, exactly. to Ken. Or using Google Translate, that works really well. <laughs> Not. Uh, but I'm going to give some links so you can, you can find Ken and go and check him out when you're in Tokyo. Because uh, there's a lot to learn from Ken. Okay, Ken, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys and girls, before you go, I want to tell you about the Mindfulness for Modern Life bundle I've created for you. You can get this for free when you sign up for updates at warriorstrategy.com. Now in this bundle, you're going to get an 8 Tai Chi Chuen Performance Enhancers PDF, a powerful Qigong video, and a mindfulness audio track. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to warriorstrategy.com. Hey, this is Robin Gamble, thanking you for listening, hoping you enjoyed the content, and kindly asking you to share with your friends if you did. Thanks again, and see you next time.